Welcome back to this podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this recording, we'll review the key features of Ixodes co-infections, namely anaplasma and babesiosis, for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Just to be clear, the NBME is fond of presenting patients with Lyme disease. They expect you to know the tick vector, Ixodes scapularis, but then they do the bait and switch. What other diseases are carried by this tick? Answer, anaplasma and babesiosis. Boom, you're done with this section. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. So co-infection with Ixodes tick. We're on Ixodes tick now, not other ticks. So anaplasma, phagocytophyllum, intracellular pathogen, anaplasma called human granulocytic anaplasmosis, so it's in granulocytes, in PMNs, as opposed to human monocytic ehrlichiosis in monocytes. They don't seem that interested in ehrlichiosis, and it's not a co-infection on exodes. So it's going to be anaplasma they're going to ask about. These people come in sick as stink, leukopenia, transaminitis, low platelets. You're not going to have to diagnose it on the boards. It's really going to be in the context of co-infection with a patient with Lyme, who they're going to tell you has a Bell's palsy. The other one, Babesia. Babesia, also intracellular parasite. They present pretty similarly, but it's a hemolytic anemia with the classic Maltese cross. So on anaplasma, just to go back, Murillae are going to be, or Murillae, are, are going to be kind of a description, um, a cytoplasmic inclusion. If they want to go there, just be familiar that it exists. But you're not going to see a lot of anaplasma. Babesia, Maltese cross. Babesia, this is just a reference slide uh, for you to have on babesiosis. I showed you this 100 years ago with just the notion that be making your slides. There's no shortcuts on micro. As you come across them, just start making them. And I thought this was a good place for me when I was going through exodes and infections. That's where I threw in my babesiosis stuff. So let me say this. Maltese cross is pathognomonic. Anytime you see the word pathognomonic, Boom. That's the thing you have to remember about an infection, because pathognomonic means they're going to include it. That's how they're going to talk to you about the infection. So this patient's coming in with a hemolytic anemia and fever in the summer on Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard, and they're going to tell you the smear, and they're going to describe this Maltese cross, okay? It's because it's pathognomonic, and that's how you're going to make the diagnosis. That's how they're going to give it to you. And this is just summary on anaplasma. I don't think there's much going on here. They talk about buffy coat. So first of all, clinical suspicion is how you deal with these people. Buffy coat is spin it down, get the white cells, and you look at the white cells, and then you're looking for these morulae, and the morulae are present as much as 80% of the infection. So that's not just some bogus thing that they're making up. That, that stuff is real. High index of suspicion. So ehrlichiosis is not with exodes. That's a different tick. Lone star tick. Again, they're going to include, you're going to see the, the name of the, you're going to see this tick as a distractor. They're not coming after you with the leukiosis or that tick. It's going to be a distractor, but you have to know what it's associated with. Make your life easy. And that concludes this discussion of Exodes co infections for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 Days in March. Thank you.